by today's lessons on basic constructions. We're going to start first with some warm-up. We're going to look at sketching segment CD first. So we're going to first draw a point, label it C. From there, draw a line to another point, and then label it D. And there's segment CD. Now let's look at number two, which is ray GH. So I need a point, label it G, draw a line with an arrow out. Next to your arrow in front of it, to the left side, put a point, label it H. And there's ray a GH. Number three says to draw a line AB. So we're going to take, draw an arrow, draw a line from it, draw another arrow. Next to our arrows, we want to put a point A and then a point B and you have line AB. Number four says line M. Notice we only have one letter this time. That's because M is not a point. M is just the name of the line. So I'm going to draw a line and then next to it try to do a cursive lowercase m. Number five says acute, tri or acute angle ABC. So I draw angle. Then we're going to at the top uh, ray, we're going to put a point, label it A. The vertex has to be B because B is in the middle. And then the bottom ray, we'll put a point and label it C. Number six says uh, segment XY is parallel to segment ST. So we're going to draw first a point at the top, X. We're going to draw a line down, another point, Y. There's my first segment, XY. I want parallel to ST, so that means it's going the exact same direction, doing the exact same stuff. So I do a point, label it S, draw a line down, do another point, label it T. And there's two lines, two segments parallel. 7, 8, and 9. 7, we're going to be looking at um, midpoint, and 8 and 9, we're going to look at um, doing angles. So let's start with 7. We have on number seven, we have DE. So I'm going to draw it quick, DE. And it says that DE is 20. So I'm going to label it 20. And it says that C is the midpoint of DE. So that means C is right smack dab in the middle. And it wants us to find CE. So I'm going to label CEX. Now, if C is the midpoint, that means it cuts this d segment DE in half. So I'm going to label DC and CE as equal. So if CE is half of DE, I can write that. CE is half of DE. And then I can substitute what DE is in. So CE is equal to half of 20. So that tells us that CE is equal to 10. Now, you want to find your compass, or not compass, your protractor. And reminder that a protractor looks something like this. And what we first want to do is construct an angle that's 60 degrees. So I'm going to draw a line. And right here at the beginning of our line, where I put a point, we want to put our compass down there. But the part that, of our compass that we want to put is right here, the bottom portion of the compass. It's either an open circle or it's uh, a raised area or something like that, usually marked as zero. And we're going to put that right over our point on our line. Now we can follow the arc of the, of the protractor up to 60 and put a point. And then we connect our two dots so we can make a 60 degree angle. All right, number nine. Number nine says to construct a 120 degree angle. So again, draw your line. I'm going to do it a little bit over here. Again, at the beginning of our line, I put a point, and that's where our protractor needs to go. This part here at the bottom where it's a center or raised area or circle needs to go on the point on our line. 
and then we follow the curve around until we get to 120 degrees and put a point. Then we connect our two points with the line and there's our 120 degree angle. All right, let's begin. Let's look at our objectives. It's to use the compass in a straight edge to construct congruent segments and congruent angles. We're also going to use a compass and a straight edge to bisect segments and angles. In a construction, which is what we're going to use, we're going to use a straight edge and a compass to draw a geometric figure. A straight edge is something like a ruler, but usually doesn't have any markings. If all you have is a ruler with markings, that's okay. Just try to get something that's flat. A compass is one of these geometric tools that's used for drawing circles or parts of circles. Four basic constructions involve constructing congruent segments, congruent angles, bisectors of segments and angles. Alright, we first are given segment AB and we want to construct CD so it's congruent to it. So we're constructing congruent segments. So you have your AB there and what we're going to do is step one, draw a ray with an endpoint C. So I put a point, label it C. From that point, draw a arrow line out, and there's our ray. Now, step two says open your compass to the length of segment AB. So I take my endpoint and I put it on A. So I'm putting it right here on A. Then you're going to, after it's on A, you're going to stretch it out to where your pencil is touching B, point B. And that gives you the length of AB. From there, with this setting on your compass, you're going to take your point and you're going to put it on C. And you're going to make a mark on your line or on your ray. This mark tells you how long AB was, so now you know where D is supposed to go. And now you have a segment CD that's the same length as AB. All right, next we're going to try again on our own. So we have XY, so let's draw in point X, draw in Y, and there's my segment XY. I want to construct RS, so it's two times XY. Now, make sure you caught this, I said two times XY. So we're taking a little bit step further from what we were doing. Same first step. Take your compass, put the point on X, stretch it out so you find out how far is X and Y. Alright, next step. Put a point, label it R. Draw in a line. Now we know this has got to be two times X, Y, so make it a long line. Now, you're going to take your compass point, you're going to put it on R, and you're going to make a mark. And that will tell you how far it was between X and Y to line up the same segment. But remember, we want two times X, Y. So that means I've got to take my compass again, and I've got to take the end point, put it on my mark right here that I made, my arc, and make another mark. And that is two times x, y. So here, my second mark is where my s needs to go. And there's my r, s. That's two times x, y. All right, we're going to now look at angles and construct congruent angles. So I have angle A, and I want to construct angle s that's congruent to it. First step, draw a ray within point s. So I put a point. Label it S, then draw a ray from it. Alright, now that you've got that, we can look at angle A, and what we want to do is we want to take our compass, we want to take the end point of it, put it on vertex A, and make an arc. And where the arc touches the rays of the angle A, you want to label B and label C. And that tells us kind of how, how wide angle A is. 
All right, now we're going to take this compass without changing the way it was, and we're going to take the endpoint and put it on S, and we're going to make an arc. And where it touched ray S is where we're going to label R. All right, now we have that arc and we have um, R labeled. What you're going to do is you're going to take your compass and you're going to open it to the length of BC and keeping the same compass setting, put the compass point on R. So you're going to take this tip, put it on R. You're going to make another mark and that tells you where T is. So I'm going to put T up there. And why did you need T? Because now you can finish out your angle S. So I'm going to connect S to T. And there's my angle S that's congruent to angle A. All right, let's take it a step further again. We're going to look at angle F, try to construct angle F. That's going to be two times the measure of angle B. So I have angle B here. I'm going to take my compass. I want to put the tip of it on the vertex B, and I want to make my arc. And let's label that um, the top point C and the bottom point D. Now I'm going to draw ray F. So I put a point, label it F, and then draw a ray. Remember, we want this two times angle B. So now I'm going to take my compass, still set where I had it for my um, angle B, take the point, put it on F, put it right here on F, and then make your arc. Now you're going to take your point, you're going to put it over here on D and you're going to stretch it out so it touches C and then go back over here we forgot to label this let's label where our arc touch ray F let's label that E so now we're going to take our compass take the point put it on E and up here at the top make another arc all right, now if we wanted identical to angle B, we would draw a line, but we don't. So let's take this point here where we made an arc, the two arcs meet, and let's label this G. Now you're going to take your compass, you haven't changed it. You're going to take the end point, and you're going to put it on G, and you're going to now make another arc. And then we're going to take at point F and take our straight edge and draw a line up to our last arc that we drew. And there's an angle that's two times angle B. That's why we had to do it two times. All right, perpendicular lines, two lines that intersect to form right angles. And we use this upside down T as a symbol for perpendicular, so we don't have to write out the long word. Now, if you look at our diagram, we have line AB that is perpendicular to line CD, and that's why it has these little boxes to represent 90 degree angles. Now, perpendicular.